Hello everyone, this is Christy and I am giving you here a short and dirty introduction to this week's module, which is writing in the library, writing in and the library or media center. If you click on your instructions for June 22nd, um, you'll see that we've organized tonight's discussion around that venerable concept of the rhetorical triangle, frequently, although erroneously uh, attributed to Aristotle himself. So, writing, like any perform, form of communication, can focus on one and sometimes more points on the triangle. There's writing that focuses on the speaker or writer. Among those kinds, we consider creative writing, um, journal writing, um, therapeutic writing even. There's writing that focuses on the audience. That would be persuasive writing, political writing, mm, uh, letters to the boss asking for a raise, grant proposals, anything like that, that requires a response from another person or persons. And finally, there can be writing that focuses on the subject, what in my field is called writing to learn. For you'll find out, writing can actually help you learn the material of any subject better. Okay, um, with that in mind, here's what we've got on the docket. Um, first up is a screencast about sort of basically what we know about writing in theory and practice. I made it for last year's group. Um, it's still current and still works, but ignore about the last five minutes because that's I've changed the discussion assignment for this year. So that'll confuse you if you listen to the assignment at the end of the podcast. Okay. First of our listenings is Deborah Brandt, who is um, the leading um, scholar on literacy, particularly literacy and ordinary life in the workplace in our time. In this um, YouTube video, Brandt talks about how writing has become, she calls it the work of our time. It's absolutely the most crucial work that people do. Um, and it tends to be high stakes, very stressful. Memos to your boss, emails to someone you've never met. People today write all the time. The second little short reading is about adolescent literacy, um, countering the myth that people learn to do their reading and writing in elementary school, and focusing on ways in which motivation is important to making people read and write better as they move into the later years. The third essay by Gail Bush is a kind of um, plea for supplementing reading with writing activities within the library, um, writing as part of the library's um, purview and area of expertise. And finally, um, there is a short piece from the National Council for Teachers of English about the importance of extending writing beyond the boundaries of the classroom, um, extending out to extracurricular activities, to the world of work, and most importantly, to the family. So just as we've talked in past weeks about the importance of sending books home, of um, of having adult literacy nights or, or family literacy nights, of, of having read-arounds read in the family. Um, this article argues that writing needs to be given the same kind of considerations. If we go on and moving on, um, I ask you to investigate a series of strategies for incorporating writing into the media center. Um, these I've organized um, according to those points on the rhetorical triangle. So uh, one section is writing to explain or persuade. Uh, I want to iguana reading writing connections. It's just one of my very favorite um, YouTube videos of how to, how to use reading and writing together um, for younger kids. The second, um, the second link is 
digital lesson plans for um, composing multimodal arguments. So in the screencast, I said writing writing is not just graphical inscription on the page. It includes, in our time at least, sound, visuals, film, all those sorts of things. And so this is it's the same to college writers, but it works just as well, I think, for certainly for high school. Um, and it's how to take a persuasive essay and make it into a multimodal composition. Finally, um, there is that handy New York Times uh, site which collects together a gazillion writing prompts for different kinds of writing. So there are 200 writing prompts uh, for argumentative writing. The second um, category is writing as expression, um, of course, focusing on the miter. Um, and it, it focuses again on how to use personal and narrative writing in, in the library as well as in classes. And um, two very interesting pieces on how to make the library a writing makerspace. So we spent quite a bit of time talking about um, makerspaces um, and this is sort of extending that concept to the notion of writing. One of my very favorite sites is NaNoWriMo, the um, how to write your uh, novel within a month. Um, I have done this with students um, and I think it would be a, a, a kind of great assignment for probably more advanced students. Uh, writing and social justice is a big topic in um, university classes. A lot of my teachers focus around those kinds of um, topics. Uh, Nancy had put Saving Black Mountain in her uh, list on writing is social for that last week's um, discussion. And I think it's a good example of how writing can be used in um, involving students in community activities. The second one there is um, a guide to using service learning and writing courses. It's again, it's at the university level, but it's a very sensible um, kind of introduction to how writing is important to and how it can be used when students are involved in um, activities and intellectual pursuits outside the boundaries of the four classroom walls. Writing to publish or reach an audience. Um, Nancy had asked me to look particularly for collection um, of possibilities for um, publishing online student writing and the National Writing Project provides a very handy cornucopia of different places one can do that. Um, another topic that I like is um, how one can use Wikipedia. I suppose you could include this under research as well as publishing, but if you, um, if Wikipedia is quite interested in helping students use its uh, resources correctly and profitably. And this site also sort of tells you not only how to use Wikipedia as a research tool, but also how to use Wikipedia to help students imagine themselves actually writing online to an audience. Um, again, we discussed um, newspapers a bit last week. Um, and if you look at this site, the school newspaper, um, there's actually a promotional for Etowah High um, in our very own state. And the site will also remind you that writing is more than just words, um, that it is a matter of design and multimodal composition as well. And there's some uh, discussion of that in that site. Writing, family and community um, it's kind of incorporates all parts of the uh, rhetorical triangle. Um, one of the uh, kinds of community oriented writing that I like very much and that I've used not only with my students at Georgia, but also with the students I taught in Korea in 2015, where I was a distinguished senior Fulbright lecturer, um, digital literacy narratives um, is a project of Ohio State University's Amer Professor Emerita Cindy Self, and it is an aggregated um, collection of literacy narratives from all levels, all ages, 
all perspectives of people. Um, it's a great way for engaging students who don't think of themselves as highly literate, who don't think of their families as uh, sources of literacy, and helping them to kind of see through how they're, they themselves and how their um, families and communities are also kind of sources of literacy. It's a really great resource. If you use it, um, you might, especially if you're using it with younger children, and if uh, you think topics such as L LGBT writers and their literacy um, might be out of bounds for your students, you might want to kind of pre-check them. I just turned my class loose on it, and it worked well. But again, I was working with um, I was working with kind of young adults. Uh, we talked about, Nancy mentioned in um, her thing on uh, making writing social that, um, you know, if you're, if you're writing up a plan to start a school store, um, if you are uh, engaged in kind of service projects or community outreach projects, writing can have a very um, central role. So um, I gave you this guide for starting and maintaining school-based enterprises, and it's chapter 11 and 12, they're short chapters, are really kind of the ones that focus on writing. Um, just to remind you too, um, if people are, or students are involved in uh, enterprises that need advertisements, uh, that too is a form of multimodal writing. Um, and this teacher's guide from NPR is a very helpful resource. Uh, and finally, if they're going to be engaged in these sorts of um, uh, activities, they need to know how to write a business plan. And this is a very brief video to show you how these skills, uh, reading and writing and research, work together in a real world setting. Next up is that always popular topic, writing and research. Um, the first essay here uh, reminds you that writing is a useful part of the whole research process, not just that paper that you write at the end, but the brainstorming, the evaluation of websites, the evaluation of sources, um, the thought that goes into what kinds of sources you're going to use. Will it be printed sources? Will it be interviews? Will it be uh, ethnographic study of a community? Um, I think we all, we obviously all know Galileo, but I just for, um, for sake of completion, give us a link to that. And we could talk um, on Thursday about the ways in which Galileo is used in your school. Um, the Oakland University has a nice site here on teaching, research, writing. Um, again, that's, that sort of walks teachers through the process of scaffolding the research process. Um, Brain, from brainstorming up to publication, and this one too. Um, this one is linked to Common Core standards if we're still using those, um, and here's a second one to that. Then there is writing in STEM, which um, in my field is a very popular hot topic these days, um, but uh, there's an article from Psychology Today about um, using writing as an essential component of learning science. And then we have one on using writing and learning math. Um, and again, um, an argument that writing belongs importantly and naturally in STEM. And visual writing prompts, these I like a lot because they are one page, just like they say, they're visualized writing prompts. Uh, and at the bottom, um, this is a really interesting project that aims to, it's kind of a nationwide project centered mostly in Los Angeles and the East Coast, I think, that um, combines STEM learning with creative writing. Uh, and the, uh, the first two kinds of modules they developed, one was the zombie apocalypse and one was the science of superheroes. And here's a short video to introduce you to that second one, the science of superheroes. 
for to this, this week's discussion, I offer you this activity. Uh, take the strategies for incorporating writing. Investigate one. If you're, if you're interested, you are welcome to investigate more than one. But then think about um, from your browsing through these websites and articles, give me a paragraph or two discussing one strategy uh, that you read about that you feel you could or you would like to use in your own library setting. How would it fit into what you already do? Would you have partners with particular people? How could this activity support either the way things are already being done in your school, the way your teachers and administrators um, expect you to be using your library, or new initiatives that you or others might want to be developed? This is not a commitment to do this for your project or um, anything else. It's just kind of an exercise in thinking and imagination. Um, what might you do if you had had your way? Uh, if you need more things to look at, uh, you might consult the website that you had contributed earlier to a website you'd like to share page and um, look through to see if it includes a writing component that you might like to try out. Um, you are also welcome to browse the optionals uh, or to think about how one of the activities we discussed in the class so far does or might include writing. And finally, um, you could bruise the browse the optional section, which I will take us to look at next. Okay, on to the June 22nd optionals. Um, these are, uh, again, for now or later, to not look at, whatever you please. I have, the first section I have is on writing to learn activities. So if you have uh, are partnering with teachers in any kind of, um, of content areas, there are low stakes writings or writing to learn activities that are, are um, transferable to any kind of setting. Uh, some ideas on how to scaffold struggling writers. My favorite of all times, the double notebook entry. Uh, and then uh, there's, this one is, is kind of an expansion on the digital literacy narratives, uh, an iTunes course, which will kind of give you a fuller idea of how to do that. Um, it occurred to me when we were discussing maker spaces that um, we saw those videos of kids just going in and messing around and creating something. Um, and it occurred to me that after doing that, they might want to document the process for others that they went through to create what they created. So here's a section on process. Um, my favorite topic is always multimodal writing. This is what the National Council of Teachers of English says about multimodal literacies. Um, and um, he, these two are out of place. Graph, they say, I say, should probably be in research and writing. Um, and cooperative learning, also part of um, research and writing. And finally, um, and finally, uh, don't underestimate the power of creative writing. Um, it's something that can be done in small bits or serially over time. It can be done individually or in groups. There's nothing more, there's nothing more fun than having a story that gets passed around the room and is created from one to the next person, sort of like uh, the original series of Twin Peaks was. A different director picked up that program every week and took it off in a new direction. All right, this has gone on plenty long enough. I will stop there. Um, I will be looking forward to reading your uh, discussion paragraphs, postings by, let's say, by nine o'clock on Thursday morning so I can look them over and be prepared for class. And for now, thanks for being um, part of this group and for welcoming me into your group.